This is Umar Ahmed for IFL TV in association with MTK Global via Zoom. I'm joined by <laughs> former middleweight king, current super middleweight king, Billy Joe Saunders. Massive night of boxing last night, Billy. Uh, thoughts on Alexander Povetkin shock win? Listen, first of all, you just obviously got to take it off to him. Um, the age he is and what he's still doing in the sport. People forget the pedigree he's got um, and the bravery of Dylan White taking that sort of fight before the uh, position that he's in. I think that Povetkin is one of the best heavyweights in the world, but I think Dylan White is better without sounding a bit harsh because, you know, I can't take anything away, f away from Povetkin last night, but that's the beauty of the heavyweight scene. Um, my personal opinion is that Dillian White is one of the best heavyweights in the world, but he got caught with a world-class punch. And no matter how old Provetkin is, someone to come through and win all the gold medals, world championships, Olympic gold at Athens, do what he done in the professional ranks. You know, he's always got that world-class ending at any time. And I think that Dillian White will grow from it. And I think he will uh, activate the rematch clause right away. And I think he'll fight him again before December. And my opinion is this time, Dillian White will get him out there within six or seven rounds, my opinion. Maybe a bit earlier. You know, I've done that myself in fights. You know, when Dillian White dropped him, you get a little bit sloppy. You get a little bit, you switch off a little bit and you can't do that at that level. You know, and I would love to see him fight Tyson Fury. In this sort of fight here, is the lead in and making of a good fight for the Fury fight because he needs to rectify what he did wrong last night and that was maybe switch off. And you can't switch off at, at the heavyweight scene at that level for a, a, a... You cannot just switch off at all. You can't blink. You've got to be on, focused, tunnel vision all the way through until that result is, uh, is how you want it. But, you know, Dillian White will grow from it. You know, I feel for him because he was in control of the fight. But it's just this scene, man. It's just the heavyweight scene. That's that's the difference with the heavyweight scene. You know, he nearly knocked AJ up. You know, we could have been talking like this for Dillian White. But, you know, he, he's got to put this one right now before he thinks about getting in with, with Tyson and, and talking about AJ. Because this is the thing here that when... When that's in his mind, I'll win this, I'm fighting Fury. He were on it. He were coming out. He boxing lovely. You know, he, he, his mind was on it. He knew that fight was his defining fight. And that could either put a load of petrol on the fire to make it burn brighter or, or that could take something away from him, you know, at this stage. Because but he's not, he hasn't got that. He's got that character that never give up. You know, even when he got up, you know, he, as soon as he got it, he was trying to get up. Um, he were very... I thought what he said, you know, he's, he, he had an interview with Coogan and that and and what he put out there and what he said, you know, he put he, he just said what it was on the tin. Look, I got caught, end of story. I only have to come back and put it right. And um, I feel for him now, I feel for him. Was he surprised that um, when he dropped him twice in the fourth that he didn't jump straight? You know what, I thought, <laughs> to be more, to, to, if I'm honest with you, I thought that Dillian White would have got him later on anyway because of his age. But even when he got dropped, he still got back up and and he his senses was there. Everything was there. I thought the referee done a good job. Um, you know, he, he, he came around and he just got straight back to work. And I thought, yeah, like, you're not going nowhere yet. He wasn't going anywhere. And then it was, obviously, it was a big surprise, that uppercut. I think it w wasn't long until the, what was it, a few... What was it 30 or 40 seconds to the end? I can't really remember what it was, but I know it was close to the end of the round. It's heavyweight boxing though, isn't it? You mm. know, and then he's got all the the headache and stress of, look, he just split out from a trainer. Um, you know, did that play a part? I don't know. But what I will say is that what I've seen in the shape Dillian White was and what I've seen, first of all, I was thinking he looked like a proper proper heavyweight, like world level, doing everything right, catching, you know, took his time, caught him a couple of lovely shots, but then just switched off. The worst thing Dillian White did would knock him down. Do you think he takes a rematch, Bill? You backing him? Yeah, 100 million percent. I'll be, I'll be confident enough to say, in the rematch, if anybody wants to get some early money on, now I would take the bets for it. I'll take a few quid on Dillian White. 
I'll take a few quid on him. And anyone can get in contact. And I love a bet on Dillian White because I know that Dillian White's got that that never quit soul in him. You know, where he's come from. And he's done it the hard way. But look, it is what it is. I'm sure that Eddie Earn and, and, and his team and that now will be working together to get the rematch on as quickly as possible. The only thing I wouldn't want to see is, OK, let's fight in Russia and all that carry on. I'd rather see, look, let's get it back on. Pay Bevec in what you've got to pay him and get him back in the ring with, for, for Dillian White because that's the least he deserves for, for, for all the messing around he's had anyway. Obviously, all week uh, in the build-up to the fight, Eddie Earn and Dylan White were talking a lot about Tyson Fury because they was obviously going for that WBC title. But it looks like White preventing rematch will happen and this situation will go on longer. So I think it's really clear now that the fight is Fury-Joshua, Bill. That is the one we're heading to, isn't it? Um, yeah. Um, Fury-Joshua, the terms have been agreed on a couple of things to be sorted out. I'm, I'm sure that that fight can't wait to no longer than 2021. 20, you know, next year. It's yeah. got to happen next year. Um, because I feel that fight there, they're both that far up the pedestal that one might think, oh, you know what, I'll see you later to boxing, no matter what money's at the, uh, on the table. Or you never know, look what happened last night. You know, so, heavyweight boxing, why them big fights are there to make? I think you have to make them quicker than any, than any other weight because it's one punch. To be fair, that is a, a little wake-up call as well to Joshua when he fights Pulev and, and Tyson when he fights Wilder in the third fight, that nothing is guaranteed, especially in the heavyweight division. No, listen, but look. See, the, the, the thing is that Joshua knows what it's like to overlook someone and get beat and win his titles back. Tyson Fury had that on earlier on in his career, John McDermott. So both fighters have been through the similarity of, you know, it don't, it doesn't matter what level you're at when you get caught in this situation, world level or British level or, or, or whatever level. You know, you need to make sure that don't happen. You don't need to make them mistakes. You know, that's one thing I always do. Um, I may overlook and and some opponents, but always imagine right. How will I feel in the morning if I wake up a beaten man in camp? Wake up beaten man, how would you feel? You can put this right now. That's what you've got to do. You've got to put it right in training and prepare right. You know, people can what they want me. Um, but when it comes to a fight, I prepare better than, well, as good, I'm not saying better than everybody, but as good as the best, I prepare. And, you know, them little things that I've been around the likes of Kevin Mitchell years ago and seen him make their mistakes. You know, and you see all these fights. Something, you know, it, it just is what it is. Last night, it was just a, a clear world-class punch from a world-class fire. End of. And you only got to give the man credit. You can't take any anything away from him because um, Dillian White was was on form, but he just got caught. And that's that's the harsh reality of boxing. To be fair. Yeah, definitely is. Bill, every time me or Coogan speak to you, it seems like we're talking uh, about a different name when we link. Uh, them and Canelo Alvarez. Apparently, him and uh, Eddie Reynoso wanted the Yildirim fight and uh, Dizone aren't too happy about it. Um, what did you think of that statement that WBC put out about Canelo Yildirim? Well, I, I think that when it comes to the WBC, Canelo's going to get the nod over anybody. You know, 36 to 1 the vote, it was, yeah. was it? Yeah. Um, one. You know, uh, my management team even put my name in there as well. So, you know, I can't say, oh, yeah, he, they, you know, he's got the fight and be, you know, good luck to him. But the opponent don't stoop what he owes the fans. Well, not what he owes the fans, but what he really owes the boxing world, really. Let's just say the fans. Because you can't just fight someone who Eubank stopped a few years ago for the WBC. And, well, he can, and, and he is, but. It'd be nice to see him. You know, you've messed Callum Smith around because I took myself out of the equation. You fucked him around for what? How long now? Don't just drop him by the pinch of an hat. And that's right. There's, I don't reckon the zone should be saying, oh, yeah, we're going to accept uh, Yildirim. I mean, there's there, there's no reason why they can't get together and go, right, well, we'll give Yildirim a crack at the winner. As a few quid to step aside. I've messed Callum Smith around for a while now in negotiations. I'm sure they could have been negotiating another fight, um, which would have probably happened. But, 
at least they need to um, look at that, you know, Callum V in because that's one fight I would like to see. Um, and Callum Smith really deserves it. I think but who's in the hat at the minute, my opinion. Bill, what did you make the situation with uh, Chris Eubank Jr. and Liam Williams? I heard Frank Warren sent an offer to Eubank's team, but they, they didn't want to know. And obviously Liam and Eubank had a back and forth on social media. Did you uh, see much of that? I didn't really take no mo- not much notice of it, to be honest with you, pal. But, um, you know, Frank's offered. Bill, you're gone there. Where have you gone? Hello? Bill, yo, I can... Yo, yo. Oh, you're back. You're back, I think. Yeah, I think that Eubank's excuses with uh, working with Frank Warren, I think he's very reluctant to work with Frank Warren um, for whatever reason, I don't know. But... Um, How do you think the fight goes if it was uh, made? It's a fight I wouldn't really get over to. No? Sorry? How do you think Liam gets on in that fight? Yeah, well, I think... I think it's a good fight. I think it's a good fight for the fans. It's got, you know, it's got it's got tear up written all over it. Um, I, I, I personally would be back in Liam, but I don't think the fight would be happening. Hmm. No, I don't think it'll happen either. How's everything, anyways, with uh, with Ben, Shabazz, Josh, yourself, Tom? All good. Yeah, everything's going well, mate. Everything's going well, my end for me, and um, just ticking away, um, training. Left everything up to uh, MTK to sort out. You know, I've got to really thank them because, you know, all through all through the lockdown, and you know, with the Canelo fight falling through, and then happening again. Oh, and it's, it's good when you got a management company like that. They don't really do it. That's what they do for me. So um, I've just left it to them, training now, and when they give me the call for the meeting and say, right, what do you reckon? We sit down, do some uh, do some maths and uh, hopefully get a fight. But definitely, I want, I want it to be out twice, uh, especially now I'm taking shape, getting down weight and that. But it's, it's obviously going to be once. I think this year, is just a write-off for everybody. Do you know what I mean? Mm. This year, is just an absolute write-off for everybody for, for careers and for fights and for, you know, every day of life, really. But a boxing has really affected it. All right, Bill, thanks for your time. Won't keep you any longer on good form today. Uh, hopefully, see you back in the ring soon and uh, we'll catch up soon. All right, Billy? Hello, mate. God bless.